This is your morning in eight minutes. Today, Bahama authorities are sending samples to U.S. Medical Lab to figure out how a Maryville couple and another man died at an all-inclusive resort. Authorities say Robbie and Mike Phillips reported feeling sick at the Sandals Emerald Bay Resort on May 6th. The next day, they were found dead inside their room. Another man in a separate villa also died. His wife was flown to a hospital in Miami. The Phillips had three children and six grandchildren, and they owned a travel agency in Maryville. Family and friends are remembering the couple. They were absolutely wonderful neighbors. They were great people. Um, they just, I mean, pillars in the community. They were um, just great friends, great parents, great grandparents. Well, right now, police do not suspect foul play is involved. And this morning, the manhunt for a capital murder suspect and a former jail guard is now over. Casey White is in custody. Vicki White is dead. U.S. Marshals tracked the fugitives down to a hotel in Evansville, Indiana. Marshals briefly chased the Cadillac they were riding in before it crashed. Officials say Casey White surrendered to police following that chase. According to a coroner's report, Vicki White later died in the hospital. U.S. Marshals say she suffered an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Both were on the run after leaving an Alabama jail on April 29th. Well, right now, the Sevier County Sheriff's Office needs your help finding this missing girl. They say 13-year-old Kimberly Maradiaga ran away from her home in the Kodak area around 5 o'clock yesterday morning. The Sheriff's Office says it's possible a man driving a dark-colored Nissan Altima picked her up. If you know anything, if you recognize her, call police. And the Knox County Sheriff's Office says they're still looking for a missing Knoxville man. Daniel Dewey was last seen March 23rd. The TBI issued a silver alert for the 72-year-old. KCSO says he may be in the Brown Gap Road area in North Knox County. If you know anything, call police. And a Knoxville man facing DUI charges after police say he crashed into the Knoxville Fire Department headquarters. This happened early Sunday morning. Police say Devin O'Neill is not hurt but is charged in the crash. Fire officials say that building suffered major damage. And covering your health this morning, visitors and patients are no longer required to wear masks at any Covenant Health facility. Staff are still required to wear one when treating patients who have COVID-19 or who are not fully vaccinated. You can also ask your caregiver to put one on if it makes you feel comfortable. Well, this morning we're learning more about what is being built at that Sevier County exit on I-40. We're told it's unlike anything in the United States. The Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians is approving funding for Phase 1 of the 407 Gateway 2 Adventure in Sevierville, a project that includes what will be the biggest Bucky's Travel Center. Those are the popular clean gas stations with super clean bathrooms and tons of gas pumps. The project is broken up into different phases. $75 million will go toward the first phase with future plans for retail, dining and entertainment space. Well, students applying to UT next fall will be required to submit standardized test scores. Students will need to submit the scores from both the SAT and ACT or both. If you take both, the university stopped requiring test scores during the height of the pandemic when testing centers closed down to try to mitigate the spread of the virus. Well, WVLT is proud to be your official station of the Vols. The baseball team back in action tonight after dropping their first series of the season against Kentucky. They host Bellarmine tonight before welcoming the Georgia Bulldogs to town on Thursday. First pitch tonight is 630. You can stream the game on the SEC Network Plus. And it's peanut free night at Smoky Stadium. This is something the team does every year. It's the only game where you won't see peanuts or any candy or other food items that have anything made with peanuts. Smoky Stadium gets a deep cleaning before the game with all those seats getting pressure washed. So kids with peanut allergies get the chance to enjoy a night out at the ballpark. Tonight's game is against Montgomery. That first pitch is at 7 o'clock. And Second Harvest Food Bank's annual May Day Radiothon is happening right now. You're taking a live look into the Radiothon. If you want to help, you can call the Second Harvest number. It is 865-243-8227. The money Second Harvest raises today is going toward its food for kids and school pantry programs. They say every little bit helps. $100 is all it takes to feed a child in the food for kids program for an entire year. That Radiothon lasts until 7 o'clock tonight. Getting a look at your first alert at traffic, a commercial vehicle fire on I-40 eastbound has been causing some problems all morning long. Looks like 
That traffic is just now starting to move on I-40 just east of Strawberry Plains. They do have the right lanes closed for this incident. You do need to get in the left lanes to get by, but again, it looks like that traffic's starting to move just a little bit. If you do want to avoid this incident, you could get off of Strawberry Plains Pike and use Asheville Highway to reconnect with the interstate at a later point. But that's the only incident causing any slowdowns for you as you are getting out the door. Do you want to remind those who are heading through Campbell County this week, I-75 southbound down to one lane from Howard Baker Highway to Caraville. This is as they do some paving work in the area. It's looking good right now. No congestion. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley. 655 now on your Tuesday. There's a few things you want to keep in mind if you're going to be outside today, even if it's just for a few minutes. Wear that sunscreen. Reapply that sunscreen because it is going to be a warm day. We're going to be sweating it off. Let's be honest. Air quality is at a moderate level. Pollen counts are high. Actually, to take a closer look at today's pollen, we do have more maple, mulberry, and hickory contributing, contributing to that high tree pollen. Grasses are at that moderate level. Remember, we're going into summer season, which is mostly grass pollen. So we're going to kind of come down on those trees slowly over the next month as more and more bud and bloom. Over the uh, next couple of days, as I mentioned, the humidity just barely ticks up. But to even kind of map it out for you here. Hopefully you still got all smiles. It's just a little humid when it comes to this afternoon to evening. Uh, same story for tomorrow as well as we do gain some mild mornings now. Clear sky and a beautiful warm sunny day ahead. Right now it's 53 Crossville to 50 Middlesbrough, 56 in Knoxville. And then again those 40s mountains far north and east. But big picture it's all clear until this center of low pressure spins our way. And we're looking east this time, not west yet. That's where it's going to kick up some spotty rain and storms by the end of the week and then build up going into your weekend. So for now, we have some stray haze and fog, plenty of sun and a good afternoon at 83. That warmer day again, slightly more humid. And a quick look at your first alert eight day planner shows you those rain chances I was just talking about. So I'll have the latest on that track, all the ups and downs for you coming up on the CW. I keep paying attention to like when I can officially switch out my summer clothes and my all my sweaters <laughs> and stuff, but I've switched. Yeah, I'm there. I think it's time. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day.